Welcome to Chopping It Up, the podcast for the underdog by the underdog. We're back with Emily again, man. If you missed the first episode with Emily where we talked about her life, I'll throw up a thumbnail up right here so you can catch up on that. So here's the part we really wanted to get to was talking about your brother dying of an overdose, right? Yes. So give us a little bit of background on Will and um, a few things about him before we get into what happened to him. Will was very headstrong and um, he was funny and gosh he was just all around a really good person i mean if he loved you he'd give you the shirt off his back but he struggled with mental health issues and of course some um, addictive personalities i mean he wasn't addicted to pills or anything like that he was an alcoholic okay when did he start drinking oh god will will was young i mean I told you in the last episode, alcoholism runs very deep in our family, and mm -hmm. Will just folded to the temptations of it. I mean, he he was very much uh, a victim of it, and um, I want to say like I can I don't know an exact age for when mm -hmm. he started drinking, but it started. I noticed in his twenties early 1918 that was when it got really heavy so um, right before he was old enough to purchase it himself mm -hmm. so yeah. by the time he was able to buy it himself he was pretty much we were done drinking at that point. daily yeah okay and uh will was like i said he was not addicted to fentanyl or crack or heroin or anything of that sort it was just alcohol and recklessness um will had depression problems and uh i think that I can't say this for sure, of course, because I don't know what he was thinking mm -hmm. at the time. But I do think that the occasional drug use on top of the drinking was his way of escaping what was in his head, what no one else knew, you know. And, I mean, we knew he was depressed. We knew he was having extreme depression issues and trying to find him where he fit it in the world. And he was having trouble doing that. But he, uh, gosh, he was, it was sad. I mean, no 26-year-old deserves to lose their life. All right. Um, I guess I'm going to tell you a little bit about the day it happened. Okay, um, perfect. I was like, we. my family lives on a second shift schedule. My husband works from 2 to 11. So we don't get out of bed till 12, 1 o'clock. We don't go to bed till 4 or 5 a.m. So at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, I'm dead. Like, I uh, don't even try to call my phone because I'm not answering. Um, so my phone's blowing up. I mean, it is ringing and ringing. It's like seven, eight o'clock in the morning, basically. And it's blowing up. And I go down there. I cut my D&D &D on. I didn't even see who was calling. I do not disturb. Leave me alone, okay? I, I didn't, I guess I was half asleep. And I didn't think, you know, like, all right, well, something could be wrong. About that time. My husband's phone starts blowing up and uh I'm like joey my husband joey he's like emily you need to get up like your phone our phones are blowing up you need to see what's going on so i get up and as soon as i get up i look at my phone and there's a text from my sister Alyssa, and there's over 30 missed calls from my parents there's a missed call from my sister Alyssa. there's missed calls from my siblings i mean there's so many missed calls and i'm like what in the world mm, you know you gotta know at that point right I thought, honestly, and I hate to say this, I thought something happened to my dad. Hmm. You know, that, um, like, I was like, oh, my God, so you Will know. never even crossed your mind that no. he's young. Okay. No, I never thought Will. And right as I was going through this stuff, my phone starts ringing again. It's my parents. And I answered the phone. And at that time, it was 8.51 a.m. I'll never forget the time. Um, my phone had been blowing up for over 50 minutes. And, um... My my mom was like, Emily, and I was like, yeah, like, why are you calling? It's early. You're going to wake the kids up. She's like, uh, Will died. And I remember looking like, like, I'm still half asleep, you know. And I look up at my husband, and he's like, what's going on? Because at this point, he's sitting up in the bed. And I was like, they said Will died. And I instantly, like, I'm like, what do you mean Will died? And she's like, Will died, Emily. We're all down here at the hospital. You should probably get down here. And I was crying so hard at this point because I'm like, it doesn't, it, nothing made sense. Like, 
I didn't understand how he died, when he died, what happened, you know, like mm, I'm bawling course. and I more I got, questions than answers right yes. in that moment for sure. And I got up. I mean, my kids are both still asleep. My husband's due for work at two a.m. and two p.m. You know, and I was out the house. It was like eight fifty-five when I finally was able to get myself up and like dry my eyes. I was out of the house by eight fifty-eight. Um, and when I got to the hospital, that's probably what traumatized me the most. Is that um, I went in. They gave me this. Thing and it was for the uh, the parent the family room mm -hmm. and I went in I, as soon as I walked in I see my sister Alyssa and her eyes are really big swelled up and you tell she's been crying my little brother Billy who's only fifteen at the time I mean he looks so bad I mean his eyes are puffed up and red and he just looks like defeated basically he looks exhausted and defeated at fifteen years old and I'm looking around and I see. Grandma and she looks bad, and I don't see my dad anywhere. And I'm like, "Where's my dad?" You know, and I sit in there for maybe five, six minutes, and I'm like, "I gotta go find my dad. My dad and my brother's missing." You know, I walk out of the hospital and I see my dad standing up to get out of his car, and they have been there for hours. So I mean, for over an hour, hours, probably plural as in two or three. And I finally walked over to him, and when I seen his face, that's what broke me, I think, the most, was that my dad's never looked weak to me. My dad's always been a very strong, you know, hard-headed man. I've never seen my dad really cry. And I looked at his face, and his face was as white as your walls, except for the red rings around his eyes. And he just looked like, he he died inside that day and um I mean that we went to my grandma's after that and I saw my dad just look up you know at his mom and you know I feel like that's what he needed at that time was his mom and still crying still so distraught and upset and I mean it was to the point I was also six months pregnant at the time um it was so bad that I like, I had uh, high blood pressure, and I knew my blood pressure was going to, from how upset it was, I had to remove myself from the situation, because seeing my dad broke like that broke me, you know, and um, then, of course, the funeral, and the viewing, and gosh, it was so many people, so many people came out to show their love for him, I mean, I would say over half, we had the entire church parking lot full, and then some, and I want to say 150 to 200 people at the minimum showed up to his funeral and viewing and parties we've had since then for him has always been jam-packed full of people. I mean, balloon releases and all. He, I wish he would have saw, he was so depressed and didn't know where he fit in the life. And I wish now he could have saw the amount of people he impacted. I mean, Every single day, there's somebody posting about him still. And it's been a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is still so loved. And usually after a while, they die down, you know. Deaths die down. Only people that are still suffering is the family. But it's not like that with Will. Will is still being posted. And still being brought to life in so many different ways. And it just shows that you don't have to be an addict to be to overdose and die like you can be reckless one time and that'll be it so as far as you know before that like you don't know of fentanyl use before that no him? now once i will never forget this one time um it's back in my active addiction and i was doing some boxing and it was just something i got my hands on it was not like an addiction and will was with me and um, I asked him, I was like, do you want to, you want to bump for this? And he said, and his exact words was, no, I don't fuck with that shit. And uh, I was like, okay, you know, he's like, um, Will's mom's an addict. So I think like a very, very, very hardcore addict, like not a functioning addict. Mm -hmm. So I think I've always thought that heroin and boxing, because that's her, was one of her, you know, was off the table for Will. And... I guess it was not. 
you know, like this was a side of Will that I I knew about Will's drug use. I knew about all this alcoholism and stuff like that, but never to that extent. And I don't think, like I said, I don't think he was actively using fentanyl, anything like that. I think it was more, I'm having a bad night. I'm going to take this fentanyl pill. It's going to make me feel better. I'm indestructible. Nothing can kill me. Nothing can bother me. You know, I'm, as he would say, I'm Will Winneman. Like, I'm not worried about it. And it was just that one time. And until the autopsy came back, I didn't believe he overdosed. I thought maybe he had like a brain aneurysm that we didn't know about. Mm. And when he was, he died in his sleep. And uh, I thought maybe that was what it was. Like something completely off the wall and unrealistic. So was there anyone that spoke about getting the pills with him? Do you like, you don't have to say any names or anything, but do you know where the pills came from? And do you know if he thought they were just regular 30s? No, um, I know where the pills came from. And I do know that he was aware that of them they were being fentanyl. fentanyl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do know he was aware. Um, from what I was told, he had messaged a couple people asking if they wanted to buy some. Mm. So obviously he was aware that what he had um, and the people that he, the guys he was hanging out with at the time were obviously not good influences or brought him. He had to get him from one of them. We do know that. And uh, I mean, there was no, there was no, how do I say it? Like, there's no, in my opinion, the guys who gave him the pills should be in jail, you know? And, um, of course they're not, they're not, you know, they say the, um, drug enforcement agency, DEA or whatever is investigating. I mean, there's nothing to investigate. It's black and white. There's plenty of evidence, but no arrest. <coughs> um, I mean, and this is where I come, this is where I have a very hard time because back then, if you sold somebody drugs and they died, I would have thought, well, that's not your fault, you know, like you, that's the drug addict's fault, you know, and, but now I think like, I guess it happening to someone so close to me, I feel like they should be punished. And that's where I find myself in a, in a bind. Do I think they should be punished? Yes, I definitely do. But do I think it will ever happen? No. I don't. I don't think so at all. I think it's going to be one of those cases that it's like just falls into the cracks. Hmm. And it's sad. Mm -hmm. It's real sad. A 26-year-old boy who never got married, never had kids, never got to experience the amazing things life has to offer shouldn't be in the ground. He should well, be. What do you think about that? Cause so for me, the first thing I'm trying to think of is where was his mind at that point? Like for me, uh, fentanyl is just not even an option. Like, yeah. Of course, I'm not using whatever, but it, it became a point where that was not even an option because I see so many people dying, overdosing, arms being rotted off, whatever the case is, and it's all connected to fentanyl. So, like, I wonder where his head was. Like you said, maybe he thought I'm invincible. You can't. You know, or did he just not care and thought if I live through it, great. If I don't, great. Was it like depression on top um, of like, I, I don't, you know, I, of course yeah. you don't know either, but that's just where but my brain goes. Where, what I do know is that my brother had a God complex. He thought he was indestructible. He seriously thought that he survived taking a bullet a year before that. Um, and he survived plenty of other things. And how, my brother's. How was he shot? The circumstances are on, you know, we mm. know that apparently he was playing with a gun and okay. it went off okay. and shot him right here. Um, He had to go through extensive surgery and stuff like that. And um, mm, so this uh, this is solidified that, huh? I'm, no. a, I'm unkillable. Yes. And he had a very hard. My brother was a fighter. I mean, he would. I've seen my brother smack somebody for gosh loves for just looking at him wrong i mean he was he had a god complex on top of being depressed i mean i can't tell you how many messages i've received from my brother 
telling me he didn't want to be here anymore. That he was tired and depressed and he didn't know how to get out of it. And of course, he always came back up. But then when he went down, it was a low for him. And I think that was one of the hardest things was knowing that, you know, not knowing what was going through his mind at the time he took mm-hmm. the pill. I know that I know he didn't do it purposely because he he went home, he put his shoes up, he l- turned his TV on, he laid his clothes out for work the next day. Like, so I don't think it was, pr- I know it wasn't purposely done, you know, like any time that he's even said he was going to do something like that, it was never, there was never, he always told us first and he wouldn't make no plans. He was getting up the next morning to go to work with mm-hmm. his grandfather. And, um, I mean, he was very, very, I don't, like I said, I don't think it was done purposely. He was very, he had plans the next day. He had right. plans the following days. I think that he took it. He started feeling bad. He went home. He laid down. When he laid down, it was just, he fell asleep mm-hmm. and he never woke up. That you know, so does your heartbeat and so does the way you breathe. And, and then when already sleeping on top of that, it was just mm-hmm. so slowed down mm-hmm. that his heart just stopped. And nobody found him before it was too late to yeah even and, though there was a problem. And they said it happened at like three o'clock in the between mm-hmm. two and three in the morning. So by the time his grandma came to wake him up in the morning to go to work, it was already too late, you know. And mm, so grandma found him. Uh, grandpa found him. Sorry, by the time mm-hmm. his grandpa came to wake him up to go to work, it was uh, it was too late. So let's yeah. move on to like. Uh, the repercussions to the family like what has how has it affected you and your dad and you know everybody involved like i mean you talked about the community people still got mad love for him which is awesome but like i think we need to touch on what it's done to you know my dad a part of him died that day and it's not coming back i mean he god he lost it that day i mean I know my dad seems so okay on the outside, you know, and, um, but on the inside, you know, I've seen it, you know, my dad used to go to Winchester. He lives in Slingsville. So he used to go to Winchester every weekend, party all weekend long. He's not doing that no more. He's sitting at home by himself watching murder documentaries. Hmm. Uh, I mean, he is, he died that day with Will. A part of him is not coming back and, I've, his house is like a shrine to Will. I mean, there's a room in his house with Will's shirts hanging up on the wall and Will's pictures. I mean, I'll never forget what my dad said to me. He's like, I didn't just lose my son. I lost my best friend. Right. Yeah, because they and hung out real tough. They, they did everything yeah. together. And he's like, I lost, you know, basically everything all in one day. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what breaks my heart the most. Is that he's just a shell of a human now I mean just trying to get to the next day and I honestly in my honest opinion my dad would be okay with going today just for the simple fact that he's going to be with Will again and that's what he wants he doesn't he has no concern about what's here all he's concerned about is what's gone and to him that's the most important thing in his life is gone and then me, I mean, it kills me. My brother didn't get to see the birth of my daughter. Mm-hmm. I mean, my brother was such a good uncle. I mean, he was an amazing uncle. And our sister Alyssa is about to have another baby. And our sister Christina had another baby. And he missed out on all these things. And I think what gets me the most, I have my days. Like some days I can look back and I can talk like we are today. And I'm fine. And then other days I look back and I think of him and I just instantly lose it, you know, like to know that no memories will ever be made again. Like uh, he was 26. He didn't deserve to die. I mean, he had so much life left to live and, and all over one little pill. Like yeah. He's seeking, he's seeking pleasure, but ends up not waking up ever. Like that's just like a thing that took you 10 seconds to do took your life for the rest you'll never you never do anything again like he 
he didn't deserve it. You know, he was, uh, let's see. It kills me the fact the most that he still had so much more to do. He still, if his impact was this big at 26 years old, imagine what it would have been at 50 or 60 or 70. I mean, he is had so much more to do and he's missing out on so many things, you know? And I, actually, I can't say he's missing out because I feel my brother with me at times. I've had dreams of my brother that felt so realistic that I know that he was there, you know, or things that like my brother was obsessed with subtitles. I mean, and this could just be me trying to find a way to mm-hmm. uh, live with him. But mm-hmm. my brother was obsessed with subtitles of movies. I hated them. I freaking hated them i would always complain every time he would turn them on like turn them off we we're not reading the movie Mm -hmm. we're watching it Mm -hmm. now every time i get on my tv at least three times a week the subtitles are on i'm trying to figure out like why who keeps turning the subtitles on because it's just me and my husband my husband hates subtitles i hate subtitles my kids can't work a remote so to me that's him like you know coming to me but i say it could just be me trying to find a way to still have him because Mm -hmm. I, living a life without him has been it was the worst thing that's ever happened to me you know like I've gone through really 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 hard times but losing him that was the worst thing you know I lost the person that I looked up to the person I related to the most the person that if I would have called he'd be there in a heartbeat I mean I never had to second guess if my brother was coming I knew he was coming and um, I saw my dad get shattered that day. His grandma, his poor, poor grandma. I mean, it breaks my heart seeing her post because she's still so broken hearted. Like it is like she, it, it, it just breaks my heart because I know that was her baby, mm-hmm. you know, and it breaks. Yeah, you're not supposed to watch your grandchildren die. You're not supposed no. to watch your children die, but especially your grandchildren. Like, how old is grandma? I'm not sure exactly. I think she's in her late 60s, mm-hmm. you know. And then you have Alyssa, our sister. She is still broken by it to this day, too. I mean, she struggles to get through her daily life because of it. And, I mean, she, it breaks my heart because her and Will were really close as well. And, you know, you go from seeing everyone every single day she lived mm-hmm. two doors down from him he was there every single day of course to never seeing someone again um, yeah man uh i don't think we can ever be ready for that and you know you think about people die old all the time so 70 year old people are supposed to die but man when my mom goes it's gonna fuck me up for life well regardless if i'm expecting it she's lived a life or not so when those things happen and you know my baby's mother died at 26 i think in 94 while I was in prison like that's something you don't forget about man no. and you, the whole time you're always thinking those things like what kind of mom would she have been what would she be doing today same thing you're thinking like what would we'll be doing today what would he have said to me this morning those people that are missing how would he be in their life today and another thing I'm really really guilty for is the night before my brother died um me and my, I have a video on my phone of me and my son dancing in the kitchen. You know, we're dancing, we're making dinner, he's helping me make dinner, we're laughing, you know. Mm-hmm. We're just having a good old time. And I'll look back and be like, was Will suffering at this time? Did I, was I sitting here enjoying my life while my brother lay dead in a bed, you know? And I think mm-hmm. that's my way to try to make myself feel guilty for not doing something you know like could I have done anything at all could I have called him and been like that night and been like hey um what are you doing like or some just started a conversation yeah. would it have made a difference and you have this constant regret yeah and you're beating yourself up over things that you can never change you will never know if they're gonna help or if they would have helped but your brain can't help but to think about it you just still thinking <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I've had a lot of people say that, especially child children that have had lost parents or whatever. Same exact example. I was doing this while that was happening, and I wonder what I could have done. So that's very normal, I think. 
Yeah, like, if I could have just done anything, you know, like, what if a simple text would have would have changed it? I just talked to him the day before, like, the day before the day it happened. So, the 20th. Yeah, you know. uh, just don't kill yourself over that one. You know what I mean? It's like, hindsight's twenty twenty. Of course, you could think maybe I would have called him, but he probably wouldn't even have told you about the pill. He probably would have taken it anyways. He had no idea I was going to do that. Mm. Thought I was going to help him sleep. He's going to wake up and go to work. Nobody was not intentional, right? Yeah, and I it's I think that's what kills me the most though is like knowing that he was alone mm. more than anything. Yeah, right. Like knowing that when he took his final breath, he was by himself. Like he wasn't like um like I I told you in the last episode my uh my husband's grandfather just passed and like you said about death he was eighty two years old and it still killed us. I mean, no matter the age, it's still hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but he wasn't alone when he took his last breath. There was all of us, and he was he was filled with love, you know. And I, I, I believe that Pappy went out knowing that he was so loved. Where I wonder if Will went out the same way, mm. you know? Did he go out knowing that? he was loved by so many people or did he go out thinking that he was alone or did he, I wonder if he suffered. Like they say that, you know, he died in his sleep, but did he know what was going on? You know, did he wake up for a second and be like, Oh my God, you know, did he have, this pain? is not good. Something's happening. Yeah. And or did he not know at all? I'd like to think he went peacefully. That's what I try to tell myself. But then in the back of my mind, I always have these unanswered questions that are never going to be answered. Right. Have you ever overdosed? Yes. A fentanyl? No. On what? I overdosed on pills. Okay. What kind of pills? Uh, hydrocodone. Okay. And so I was, when, you, was, when, you, when you overdosed, did you like, do you remember any of it? I remember taking the pills and then I remember waking up in the bathtub. So uh, that's how I feel like, uh, that's how I feel like his death was. He and, took the pills and he woke up in heaven. And I, I want to, you know, I want to. I really do think that because it's it's so you get to that nod and just everything goes away. I've I've overdosed on fentanyl. They had to Narcan me three times. I don't remember nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I don't remember putting it in my arm. I don't remember anything until they were wheeling me out of the hospital to the jail. And I was so sick when I got Narcan. Oh my god, I was so sick when Mm -hmm. I woke up. All I could think was, I'm about to puke everywhere. So with all that happening too, man, you never thought about using, you, you, you're no, you know, you never defaulted to, Hey, maybe I should go get drunk or high or something to numb this pain. I was pregnant with my daughter. Okay, and so I, it honest, wasn't an option at all. No. When I, I had a miscarriage back in January of last year mm. and, um, we weren't really looking to get pregnant, you know, after the miscarriage, um, our kids have been planned, but Elena was a little unplanned. We weren't trying, but we weren't not trying. Mm-hmm. And I think God knew that I wasn't going to be able to survive my brother's death without a reason to... You ever think that Will might have been reborn in her in a way? I see Will in my son. My son acts just like him. He looks like him. He's My, my son is headstrong where Will was headstrong. Mm. My son likes to fight where Will likes to fight. I mean, my son likes to wrestle, basically. And my son is funny and like I said he has the little blonde hair and the blue eyes he's a skinny little boy and that was Will Will was the skinny little blonde hair boy that ran around and I mean was headstrong and didn't didn't care about anybody's opinion and was very very just himself and that's who I see in my son every single day my son will say something or do something that reminds me of him and I mean it's sometimes it's the littlest things like prime example I have a toddler so you know they're they're a mess sometimes okay Mm -hmm. and um he's learning the word no you know and tell him to go do something he's like no like no I'm not and I know that's horrible, but that reminds me of my brother. Like, my brother, I could tell my brother to do something. Like, why would I even do that? Like, no, I'm not. Right. And, or looks my son makes. My brother had this smile. It was one of a kind. I mean, it was just this cheesiest grin. And my son does it. And I just, I see my brother and my son so much. Literally so much. It's 
there's no other way to put it. I mean, so with all that too, man, like, what would you want to say to people out there that are listening? Maybe somebody's thinking about taking a pill. Maybe somebody's using fentanyl right now. Like it takes one time. It takes one time. It doesn't, it, you don't even have to be an addict. You can do it to ease your pain or you can do it to get out of your head. And that's the last time you'll ever do it. And just because I mean, you do 10 of them don't mean that number 11 was the same thing. That could be the one, right? It could be the first one you ever take or it could be the hundredth one you take. That's what, and each one is different. No mm -hmm. fentanyl is the same, you know, mm -hmm. like every single thing. I mean, every single pill is different and it's not going to affect you the same way the last one did. I mean, you're going to leave so many people behind and you before you take it think of how your sisters and your grandparents and your mom and dad and if you have kids your kids are going to feel because the pain I've suffered through with my brother is not a pain I would wish on my worst enemy I mean it's not something that just goes away yeah man so learn from the shit we've been through huh yeah try to learn from some mm -hmm. of our experiences the pain that we've suffered and let us tell you how to not do that if you get anything from what i said you know it's that it's not worth it you know you can be 26 year old 26 year old healthy you know um not have any care in the world and have this god complex and you can be reckless one time and then the rest of the, the rest of your parents or your sister's life is going to be spent visiting you at the grave mm -hmm. That's one of the roughest issues I've dealt with is knowing that the only way I will see my brother again is if I die, which that's not an option for me, or through videos and pictures. And that's the roughest part. Yeah, I think you're doing a lot, though, by keeping his memory alive. Also, like, like uh, you know, I don't know if you call him a martyr or not, but to the point to where maybe a martyr is someone that people can learn from. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know learn from the experiment yeah. or the experience of him not living through something that he didn't you know was going to happen man because we don't know you get that little pill it could have death in it or it could not every yeah. single one of them's a roll of the dice right and me and my sister Alyssa, we try hard to keep his memory alive i mean we do balloon releases parties you know like we have a party coming up this weekend for him um we do um we made sure his funeral and viewing were beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like we've sold lighters and air fresheners with his face on them. Can't tell you how many times I've been going down the road and I look over and somebody's got Will's face on their windshield, you know, mm -hmm. <coughs> it's just little things like that. And, you know, like keeping him alive is more going to be, you know, a very, it's the rest of my life will right. spent screaming will be spent screaming long live will i mean like yeah man don't forget him you know don't forget him make sure that uh he stays alive in your memories and anyway anything you do that way the parties and stuff like that yeah that's just a way to keep him alive man keep posting keep posting pictures mm -hmm. every every chance i get i'm any excuse i have i right. post them you know well, i'm glad you reached out man i'll, I'll pull a picture something of a good picture for this thumbnail too so you know, people see your face, his face, and know kind of more what it's about. Because I think a lot of people around here are going to be interested to hear this. I can send you some pictures, too. Sure, I can him. find some on Facebook. But sure, mm -hmm. if you send me some, it make it a lot easier. Okay, I can send you some pictures of me. So, yeah, if y'all got any questions or anything for Emily Man, you said uh, Facebook under Emily Moreland, right? Yep. So, Facebook and Emily Moreland. Or hit the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I'm glad you came, man. Thank this you This is a conversation so I was interested in having because I knew Will. Uh, I was there for the funeral. Um, it was tough. Yeah. It was really hard. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people need to know this too, man, that like it can happen to any of us. Yeah. it's You don't have to be an active addict to overdose and die. I mean, one time's all it takes. Yeah. But thank you so much for having me mm -hmm. on here. I mean, I appreciate it being able to tell a little bit of my story and then being able to keep Will alive, you know. Right. Anything else you want to say before we go? Nope. I'm other than you can reach out if you need to. Okay. And happy Father's Day. Outstanding. Right. Today is Father's Day. Yes. So happy Father's Day, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you.